Inventory is absolutely exploding across the country. Look at this chart. This is John Wake in Phoenix. That This is from Cromford, by the way. The Cromford Report tracks it weekly, but he's been posting this weekly. Look at just the absolute vertical trend compared to what's happening last year. Look at Nashville. Nashville is absolutely exploding as well. We just had 286 listing increase, and we really don't see that outside of what happens at the end of the month where it gets canceled, expired, and then it bounces back. We haven't seen anything like this across greater Nashville. It's absolutely exploding. Lance Lambert uh, t posted this for February. Now, this is Realtor.com data, and it's dated. It's February. But you can see year-over-year -year increases are happening all over the country, but some places more than others. Now, let's take a listen to what Mike Simonson has to say about this. See if you can pick up on the problem with what he is saying here. Newly listed single-family homes unsold this, this week around the country. And you can see the purple line here is 2025. So 68,000, just over 68,000. Um, you can see how many more last year at this time, there was only 59,000 single family homes. And these lines up here, 2019, 2017, 2018, all of these lines here were, were the pre-pandemic years. 68 to 72,000, 78,000, we're getting closer to the old normal levels of sellers each week. So then we had, uh, we've had multiple years with very few new listings each week. Uh, we are finally emerging past that. The problem with getting a new balanced normal, a pre-pandemic normal number of new listings is this right here. There's three and a half percent fewer homes in contract than there were in 2024. So think about that. New listings are now going back to a pre-pandemic normal. They're much, much higher than last year, but demand is lower than last year. He tells us that the sellers are coming from pent-up demand of people wanting to list in previous years, and then also potentially economically. There are some economically strained people that are worried about the economy, and they are trying to get in front of it. So he does mention, I would call those panic sellers. Uh, he does mention that that is part of the group. Let me show you this again, you can see this explosion, this listing explosion. These are active listings. That has to do with the fact that demand is not keeping up with last year, but new listings are higher than last year. That's what we're seeing, and it's astronomical. Now, when we do do a zoom in of this, look at this, by the way, this is Punta Gorda. Punta Gorda is like the ground zero of where prices are dropping right now. Pretty wild to see that. We got to keep an eye on Altos. He, he's got the best pulse on national ev everywhere. And Nashville tends to be a bellwether. Typically what happens in Nashville is happening across the nation. So I do feel like I get a little bit of a lead because I track this daily, whereas he reports Monday what happened the week before. So what I'm showing you now is probably going to show up uh, on Monday when he looks at it. But look at this active listing count. Okay, now this is broken out by new builds on the right side and existing listings on the left side, okay? And what you can see here is that the listing explosion, the active listing explosion is happening among the existing listings under $750,000. Now, I know what you're thinking, 750, that's a ton. Okay, that's about one and a half times the median sales price in Nashville. So what I'm trying to capture here is really the vast majority of transactions but the fact that this nuanced existing resale pocket of listings is where the, the biggest growth is coming from kind of hints at what he was saying, that these are sellers that are maybe nervous about the market reselling or they're pent up, they're reselling. New builds though, there's an interesting dynamic happening in new builds. If we look over here, we can see new builds actually increased quite a bit. What is that, 500 over 18? So 25%, that's still a huge increase in inventory. But when we look at demand, we are not seeing that. Let me show you. Okay, so this is contracts. These are the third Saturday of March for each year so that we're just capturing, you know, what went under contract for the past 31 days on the third Saturday of March for each year. You can see it's kind of flat. It's up a little bit from last year, but... The under 750, there's really not that much more demand for 
a massive 50% increase in inventory. But what makes it even more interesting is look at new builds. New builds, there's 100 less in demand. This is a 10% drop in demand for new builds under 750. What's going on? Why are new builds so much lower when inventory, we look at the inventory, is so much higher. Inventory is higher, but the demand is lower. What is happening? I mean, I'm telling you, put in the comments. Tell me what's happening. This is absolutely wild in the inventory growth. I think personally what's happening is that uh, existing resale inventory is starting to compete. They're starting to drop their price. It's going to start showing up. It hasn't shown up in price yet. Let me show you price because I know, you know, when we look at price, let me just, I, I, I hate this chart. Maybe you don't hate this chart. I hate this chart, but I use it anyway because it's the medium price every single week. And so what we see is that for the past couple of years, prices have been going up and the highs have been getting higher. The lows have been getting higher. This, this point right here, this was in November, like that, that was a high in November, over 500,000 a median price. Just crazy. But one thing you need to think about here, and this doesn't go back to 22, but since 22, 500,000 has been kind of the ceiling. It's bumped up, it's hit 500,000, and then it kind of drops down. Well, we're hitting 500,000 again for March, and we'll probably be between 490 and 500,000 for March. Now, if you go to Greater Nashville Realtors, because this is the same measurement that they use. I actually built it based on them. You see February's 489. Let's go back to last year though, 2024. We can see March was 493. This is going to be right where we end up. It may be a percent higher or a percent lower, but the truth is, is that it's basically flat to last year. Here's the difference. In March of last year, prices were moving up rapidly. And by April, we saw a much stronger price, even though it came back. We look at April here, we see 505. It was bobbing between 505 and 515. When they took the snapshot, it was 505, which is fine. That's that's where it came back. But the fact is, is that it was bobbing between 500 and 515 the entire time of the spring. It was a hot, hot, hot spring for prices. And then, of course, existing homes started cutting their price rapidly and prices dropped by the slate summer. We saw prices drop pretty rapidly. And that's kind of where we're at today. Except in March, we're not seeing prices skyrocket like they did last March. We're seeing them kind of flat to stabilize, to down. When we look at the contract, median contract price, we can see contracts. Median contract price is right at 500. Guess what? We go back a year ago and it had just popped above 500 to 505. For the first time this year, we're seeing negative price growth in contracts. That means that for April, we could see negative prices. And I say that in, in like, they, they're actually, the median is dropping. It's not bobbing up and down similar places. It could actually be lower. So I think flat within a percent in March. I think by April, we're going to watch this very closely. Does the median contract does it start dropping? Or does it stabilize or does it increase? We could end up seeing, barring any changes with the massive growth in inventory we're seeing, I think we could see prices drop. Now, there's one other indicator we use. It's this price cut indicator. And here you can see it's very good about tracking with the movement of price, except for it's pushed out almost 90 days. So if we take today's level, you know, on March 22nd, we can see we can go out to June to see where the price trends are. And you can see what we're seeing here is a very flat to negative price growth and price cuts are increasing right now. Now, what this price cuts doesn't capture, this is price cuts as a percentage of active listings. So if active listings grow, price cuts have to grow to keep the same number. Now, why that's important is because we have 30% more inventory this year. The fact that price cuts as a percentage of active listings is actually increasing right now means that we have 30% more price cuts happening too. To me, this signals that we could start seeing greater concessions, meaning if we come back to the contract price, what we might see is a larger gap between contract price and sales price like we saw in September. It's where those August price cuts really started to come into fruition. 
and they started giving a lot more than they normally gave. And you saw that big gap between price cuts, between contract price and sales price. I think we could start seeing that. If that gap grows here, it was about 15,000, which I think is about the largest it really gets. If that gap grows, that means by the end of April, we could be seeing 480 and 490 in the prices. And if you look at last April, it was 505. This would be like a 3% drop in price in April. I think that's possible. Really wild. And we look at active listings, it's really important to look at contract volume. Contract volume, it's been flat to down. It can't seem to get back up to where it was last year. And it doesn't seem like it is. When we look at by county, Rutherford County is an absolute disaster. This is Murfreesboro area. You can see Murfreesboro, it's down 8%, 8%. Why does that matter? Because Rutherford County active listings are up 45%. I mean, Rutherford County might be an outlier that's pushing up the entire market just because, in terms of inventory, I mean, just because of the gap that's been created between last year and this year. It's just phenomenal. It's just huge, 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 huge. Well, let's go back to under contract. Look at Williamson. Williamson down about 5%. It's almost got back to where it was last year. It's kind of stabilized and strengthened a little bit, but nonetheless, not quite there. But active listings in Williamson up 20%. Look at that jump in active listings. Wow. Wow. It's exploding in Williamson County. Uh, we can see, and Davidson, that's the other big story here. It's actually the biggest story, in my opinion. Year over year, down 10%. It is just flatlining at a much lower run rate than last year. This is a pretty worrisome sign, in my opinion. This is the fact that it's flatlining is it's a signal to me. You got to be careful in Davidson. And of course, you can see active listings skyrocketing. These are three main counties, in my opinion. Sumner, I know you guys like some, some of you look Sumner and Wilson. Sumner and Wilson up in inventory about 25%, but also contract volume. It doesn't appear there's a major uh, uh, disconnect in Sumner and Wilson like there is in Rutherford, w Williamson, and Davidson. Davidson being the core of downtown Nashville. I think prices could drop. We can see when we look at my Nashville real estate data neighborhood map, you can see inside the 440 is where most of the listings are mismatched with demand, meaning dark green. You take that active listings, you take the ratio of contracts and then you plot it and color code it. And you can see that's where you get your heaviest inventory, your buyer's markets, buying the green, selling the red. I say that, uh, but it's not always the case. You know, you do have to zoom in on a market and really analyze it. I was talking to somebody yesterday or this week, Canterbury. Canterbury is super hot right now. 21 active listings, 15 under contract. It's like a month's supply, but they were having trouble with their specific, and look at this price. I mean, look, straight up, but they were having problems with their specific house because they were an older house. And when we zoom in, this is every, this is every sale in Canterbury. And when we zoom in on their specific case, what we can see is one way to zoom in on is to take out the new builds. If you look at just the new builds, that's where the price has been going up. It's been very strong. But now if we look at the older homes, you can see prices have been flat and since August, remember August of 24, that's where we saw all those price cuts start getting, that's where we saw the price cuts really start forecasting drop in price. Okay, going back, August, we saw a, a drop in price in this neighborhood. So the older houses, the older townhouses in this neighborhood have been struggling. They've got to compete with those new builds and they competed by dropping their price. Now, they started moving some of them. And so that's the question. Are people willing to drop their price to compete with new builds? When we look at it overall, the answer is they are. And that to me is also an indicator that we might start seeing a softness in price. But look, if you're a buyer right now in this market, you know, there are ways to take advantage of value. If you're worried about prices dropping, you know, don't buy or do a value hack. You know, I helped somebody in the past month get, they're under contract for a 2.25% mortgage, their monthly payment's going to be around $2,000 on a house that rented for $3,300 a month. Now that's an incredible deal. They're going to be putting $800 of that $2,000 payment against principal. These are living there for like $1,200 plus maintenance. It's not a bad deal. Now 
The truth is there's a limited number of listings. They had to put over $200,000 down to be able to buy it. And you know the timeline for close is a little more ambiguous. Although it's typically between 30 and 60 days, it could, it could take a little bit longer than an average close. So it's not like it doesn't come with trade-offs, but in terms of value, I mean, like, what are you waiting for? To me, if you like the house and you can assume a mortgage and your rent is that much higher than your monthly, I mean, I, I just, I think those deals are out there. They're not everywhere, but they're out there. And that's certainly probably the best one I've seen Although I just helped someone get a 2.5% mortgage that was the best one I had seen. So deals are coming along. They're much better than in the past, but they're still limited, limited supply. And uh, we use this, this tool. This is one of the tools we use to decide you know, what to do with an offer, how to make an offer. And really, are you in an area where you can be competitive, push on price? Are you getting a fair price for the house and you know what is, what is the story and narrative we can attach along with your offer. If you're thinking about buying or selling and you're in Nashville area, please reach out. I can help you. I can connect you with my team. We are a data-driven strategic team or we can connect you with someone that can help you. It certainly supports the channel and I appreciate it. Love meeting you all. I've met some really incredible people. So with that, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Have a good weekend.